Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and in this video we're going to be going over the patch 5.18 patch notes. A lot of people ask me, what's in this patch? So I figured I'll make a quick video for it. If you ever want to know that though, remember you can always check the lodestone. Always worth the reminder. 5.18, not a major patch, but there are some things in here that are worth discussing, and for those newer to Shadowbringers, which we have a lot of, there are certain patterns here that you may not recognize that you can start to understand for future patches. So, definitely worth going over this one. Now, the first most important thing is that some weekly restrictions on some content has been removed, and we'll go over which ones that are and why the other ones probably are not. The weekly restriction for receiving Blades of Early Antiquity from Eden's Gate Sepulcher, Normal, have been removed. This means that you can farm as many of them as you want, and as long as you have the requisite 1,000 Tombstones of Phantasmagoria, you can make a weapon all in one day. Now, luckily, I have plenty of those stored away, but I also don't need them very much. So, you might be wondering, are Tombstones still weekly capped if they're removing the other weekly restrictions? And the answer is yes. Weekly capped Tombstones remain at the 450 cap pretty much throughout the entire expansion. They're gradually filtered out in patch 5.2, Phantasmagoria will be uncapped, and there will be a new weekly capped Tombstone available in its place. At the same time, 5.4 will do the same thing with the 5.2 Tombstone and introduce a new one in 5.4. They never become fully uncapped in the expansion, but in patch 5.56 or 5.58, right before the next expansion is going to release, that final capped Tombstone will probably have its cap raised to 900, because at that point, gear isn't really much a factor, but they still like to keep their weekly caps on that. Now, the following adjustments have also been made to Eden's Gate Savage. In a nutshell, you can farm Savage as much as you want now. You don't need to worry about weekly restrictions, one chest, two chests. Go in, kill the bosses, do them in any order you want, farm as much as you want for as much loot as you want. That's all you need to know. Don't worry about all these different checkmark things that they've given us to discuss. Now, I will say the weekly restriction on 24 mans is still there and will remain there until 5.2 because i know that's going to be the next question are they going to lift that no that's going to remain as it is but there was one adjustment to the 24 mans and this is one that we've come to expect the next one randomly shoved in here is the display of enemies and aoe markers during large-scale fates and 5.0 areas has been adjusted only 5.0 areas I i'm not entirely sure what this is accomplishing because i haven't done them since the patch went live I'm assuming it makes it so all the like ads or AoEs load properly so you can do the mechanics properly, but I don't know. The big thing is it says following this adjustment, your character must be within 100 Yalms of the Fate before enemies can be seen. I kind of liked flying towards Super Fates and seeing them in the distance, but if this is the payment for that, I I'm assuming that's not what the change was. That's just a result of the change. So I don't know. I'm assuming it's just going to make it easier for people to actually survive and see things in the Super Fates. That's the only thing that really makes sense to me. The next one, the item required to enhance weapons purchased with Allegan Tombstones of Phantasmagoria, the Deep Shadow Solvent, can be purchased from Fothard and Yulemore with manufactured coins. This is used to upgrade that 460 weapon that you just farmed with your 1,000 Tombstones plus the Blades of Early Antiquity. This allows you to upgrade it to item level 470. So yeah, if, as long as you've got 1,000 Tombstones and a spare manufactured coin, you can go from a 450 to a 470 weapon this week you can replace your hades weapon should you so desire it if that is your highest item level weapon uh you'll just have to go to the average the normal npc you would go to in order to actually get the uh deep shadow solvent now that's really the most important stuff for pve now this next section here some people are immediately groaning at that we are actually going to talk about it but there were some pvp adjustments now first of all i'd like to say i am not a pvp expert i did a lot of front lines and i did a fair amount of feast when those things were i guess kind of in their prime back in the 3.x series i have not touched them much in 4.x or 5.x so any opinion i impart to you is something that i'm likely echoing from other people who are more experienced and i would invite people who are more experienced with the feast especially in the recent 5.x patches to please comment below and provide additional insight because your insight will be more valuable than mine now the first thing the vanward potion which is the melee potion that's given the tanks and melees so that they can i guess because they're in the thick of it to help them survive was a stronger potion than what was available for the range dps this has now been renamed to the medical kit and can be used by everybody now, that means the healers, the ranged, the tanks, the melees all have access to this uh, more powerful potion now, which means you can be a bit more self-sufficient. Now, as for Ninja, I've been told Ninja is a big problem child in PvP right now, specifically in Frontlines. First off, Shikuchi. 
It gives you a 2,000 potency barrier in patch 5.15. In patch 5.18, that's being reduced to a 1,000 potency barrier. And remember, in PvP, potencies are exact. So that means it's a 1,000 damage shield now. Trick Attack is also being nerfed from 20% in PvP down to 15%. Remember, these are PvP only. That's it. Just please pay attention. The final one seems to be the most contentious change. Ill Wind, the silence duration has been reduced from 2 seconds to 1 second. Now, Ill Wind is an AoE silence, and Ninja has had this ability in various forms over the course of the expansions. And on the surface, this seems like a pretty severe hit. Uh, you know, 2 second silence down to a 1 second silence is certainly a big change. The big thing, though, is that silence in PvP straight up cancels out all spells, weapon skills, and abilities from being used during that time. So you can essentially jump into a group of people and completely shut down all of their options for a short time. Now granted, changing that from two seconds to one second is certainly a nerf, but the fact that it is a giant AoE silence is more the concern I've seen people expressing in that this ill wind change doesn't actually hurt Ninja as much as maybe the developers thought it did. That is my understanding of the ill wind balance in PvP. And so ninjas are likely to still be a powerhouse even after these three changes. Now, all the ranged physical DPS had their HP buffed to 15,000. This is apparently a countermeasure to melees annihilating them, especially with a uh, melee LB plus any damage done to their health bar. Also, the casters had theirs raised, which I heard was, you know, it's the same problem, you know, just a little bit too fragile. But then surprisingly, the healers had their health buffed. And this was a surprise to a lot of people from what I read. Because now not only do they have 2,500 more health, they have access to that Vanward potion. So it just was kind of weird to double up on their survivability when a good healer is already pretty tough to take down against inexperienced players, especially in front lines. Now on top of that, because they gave the Vanward potion to everybody, the Rearward potion, which was the old ranged and healer potion, um, that one's been removed. So they just all have the better potion now. Also, the help text for PvP action standard step and technical step have been adjusted, but the effects were not changed. So that's not a, an actual change, it's just a clarity issue. Now, this is another contentious point with PvP. This is contentious point number two, because there's three of them. Uh, season 14 of the Feast will begin. Now, we've been wondering where the next season of the Feast was. When was it going to be happening? And apparently, it was planned for patch 5.2, as they wanted to do significant PvP balancing before the, it was actually released. However, we are like, come on, man, there's really not much a reason to do the feast right now, and the front lines until they added the new mode was only kind of just like there. So they released it early. They released it in patch 5.18, but because of that, the rewards for season 14 were not ready yet. So because the rewards were not ready, they decided not to reward wolf collars, and these are used to purchase weapons that are available through the feast. You get them whether you're placed in bronze or diamond. You just get a different amount depending on where you're actually placed. And they can be used to purchase old weapons that are available for glamour purposes in the uh, wolf's den. So the fact that this season is not allowing you to earn Wolf's Collars tells us that they just don't want you to stock up on them before they're available and then purchase them as soon as they're available. But some people probably still have Wolf Collars left over and will be able to do that anyway. So I don't get why. It's like it's one of the only reasons to PvP if you're not going to get in the top 100 or the top 10. So it's a very strange thing because it can be used to purchase old items to not include it in Season 14. Everything else has remained the same. It's just that one change is really strange. It's also weird to me that it's taken them so long to get the rewards ready for the feast. You know, it feels like that should have been a higher priority than some of the other things that they've been working on. And going forward in future expansions, if we have this problem again, I would very much like to see them get those rewards out sooner, you know, make it a higher priority to have the rewards for the feast seasons done so you can start your feast seasons earlier. Um, that's what I hope. And I'm, I'm not even a feaster and that kind of just bothers me as someone who's played MMOs for so long. So that's contentious point number two. Then we come to contentious point number three. And this to me is only contentious for some people. And it's not contentious for me at all. 
To improve randomization of party members and frontlines, players are no longer assigned according to their grand company, are instead treated as being freelancers. First of all, this means get rid of the freelance option in the, the duty menu, because it's pointless now. Everyone's a freelance in frontline. Um, specifically, though, I guess this... Yeah, no, that, that yeah, I was going to say, it says only frontline, but the other mode doesn't need freelance either. It's just... Just get rid of it. Just get rid of the tick. Everyone's always freelance now. Um, but they also said further adjustments to this feature are planned for the future. So I'm kind of curious about that. Um, I wonder if they're going to allow you to not free freelance at base, but if like the queues are too long, it'll filter you into the other ones. That would be a nice compromise to have if they're planning on updating it later. Um, this is happening because on a lot of data centers, all the people who are aware of how, you know, many wins it's going to take for them to get through with pvp and the people who are connected enough are all transferring to the same grand company that grand company will win 80 to 90 percent of the time and their queues will also be ridiculously long because everyone's stacked in one place so it takes forever to fill the other two so it's imbalanced winning proportions and long queue times the two two disastrous things to have if you're trying to keep a, a mode alive so this i think needed to happen but I understand that some people really like to stick to their allegiances and some people weren't affected by this or didn't care about it as much. They just went into PVP and tried to enjoy it. Now, mind you, if you are working on a specific grand company win mount, this won't affect you. As long as you're part of adders and you're working towards the adders mount, doesn't matter what team you end up on on the field. It's just whatever grand company you're actually a part of. Um, but I've seen some people who are just super legitimately upset about this and... I don't get it, I suppose. It's just, I, I'm a, I'm not, I don't even want 72 player PvP. I just want some smaller modes to begin with. But this is kind of, I feel like, needs to happen for the 72 player modes. Can we please just get like 12v12, like a Raffi Basin or something like that? Or Warsong Gold? Like just, just, just less people. I just don't want these giant 72 man frontline modes anymore. 48 people even. Just bring me down to like 20 to 25. I'm cool with that. They also made some adjustments to Ansal Hakar because they said that kills were too powerful. Meaning that if you kill an opponent, right now there's a 20 point swing. You get 10 points for your team for killing them and they lose 10 points for dying. So they lowered the tactical rating to win by 200, which should probably speed up the matches in theory. And they also reduced the tactical point swing from 20 to 16 by making it so you only gain 8 and they only lose 8 upon a death. That doesn't really change the way it works though you're still going to be swinging matches by killing opponents which i actually think is a good thing to have even in an objective based game if you are super far behind but you can manage to punish a team for being out of position and get a full wipe on them and swing the points i think that's a very well deserved and well rewarded system for pvp this just doesn't seem to change that which seems to be what their goal was it's just going to lower that amount of swing but you've lowered the amount that people need to win, so it doesn't matter as much, I suppose. Please, if you understand it more than I do, please comment in the, in the comment section, because that's I'm just really going off my interpretation of it. Um, the ass is back for the Type B leggings. For those who had noticed, the ass had been nerfed. The ass is back. And uh, the position of the Remember Password checkbox has been adjusted on PS4, which I've actually heard PS4 players saying they're super grateful for. I, I wouldn't know. I, I don't play on the PS4 version. A few resolved issues, some bugs regarding some PvP actions, uh, hidden gorge, um, copied factory, some graphics of some equipment obtained, which I think kind of falls back to uh, this point right here. And then a known issue wherein the graphics do not appear on the Type B leggings when you are sitting. I think these are all results of what they talked about in the last live letter. So it's not uh, it's not that surprising, I suppose. And a few other things were fixed here. But that is patch 5.18. A lot of weird PvP things happening there. And it kind of just makes me glad I'm not super into PvP in Final Fantasy XIV. Because there's always something contentious, as much as I've overused that word, going on with that. But discuss it in the comment section of the video below. I'd actually love to read some of the replies to that. But thank you for watching. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share. And because this is coming out December 24th, I don't know if I'll have a video out on Christmas. So Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to anyone celebrating the upcoming Christmas and New Year's. Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Festivus, whatever it may be. Anyway, I will see all of you in the next video. And until then, take care.